Now that's enough for me. Um, back to today's event. I'm delighted to welcome Miriam Morris from the Scottish Storytelling Forum. Storytelling Forum, and over to you, Miriam. I'm really excited. Lovely. Thank you so much, Neil. And hello, everybody. It is really lovely to to be here, and and thanks so much for inviting me along to come and speak about a project that we ran last year called Talking Statues. I'm just about to do a little presentation, as Neil says, about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll do a QA. and uh, I'll share my screen. I, I will turn my camera off just as I'm presenting because nobody needs to see my face as a distraction, um, but I'll be back on for the, the Q&A after. Um, so yes, this poster was, it was kind of all over Edinburgh at one point um, during, during October last year. Um, which is really great, but I wanted to show it because I did want to make point to the dates on the poster, which is the 20th to the 27th of October. Um, this project, Talk and Statues, was part of the Scottish International Storytelling Festival. Um, so it kind of had a two to three week window of time of happening across Scotland. Um, and the reason I wanted to say that is because I would like to caveat this, this um, the case study that I'm about to show you to say that um, I was astutely aware that this topic of talking statues is, is such a big, big meaty topic and, a, and, a, and one that deserves quite a lot of attention. Um, so when putting this project together, um, I was quite aware of not making it a kind of glib task. I wanted to be meaningful. And basically what this little case study that I'm about to show you is, was basically to show that this was a springboard and a discussion starter around some of the topics to do with statues in our community, uh, their relevance today, and also um, to talk about maybe some of the unheard narratives and statues that deserve to be shared within our community as well. So I just wanted to let you know um, that we're hoping to also continue this discussion in more meaningful ways, continued meaningful ways during the line. To begin with, it would be quite rude if I didn't um, introduce myself properly, who I am, what I do, who I work for, and um, to give a wee bit of taste about how the project came about. So um, my name is Miriam and I am the National Development and Communications Officer for the Scottish Storytelling Forum, which um, is facilitated by TRAX, um, which is Traditional Arts and Culture Scotland. And TRAX brings together three forums, which is myself, the Storytelling Forum, the Traditional Dance Forum and the Traditional Music Forum. And often the three forums work in collaboration um, and support our own network of um, individuals and organisations. But um, we also work separately to support our own networks too. So the Scottish Storytelling Forum is built up of storytellers, organisations and individuals basically with the sole purpose of wanting to keep the wonderful traditional art form that is oral storytelling alive and kicking in Scotland. We're a charity and membership organisation. If anyone would like to find out more information or how to become a member, I'm happy to do that later on or by email at another time. Um, but the, how, the reason how we keep the, the ways that we keep storytelling alive in Scotland is we run apprenticeship programmes where you can learn the skills to become a storyteller. We run CPDs, which is basically development opportunities. So how do you use storytelling in, in schools and in organisations? Basically, storytelling naturally is communication. So it's to kind of help with, with means like that. Um, we do outreach projects in the communities of schools across the year. And um, we also I, I, we also facilitate a directory of 160, over 160 now, freelance um, professional storytellers. And we head up the community and family strand of the Scottish International Storytelling Festival and the Get Creative Strand, which is where Talking Statues kind of fell into last year. We are based at the Storytelling Centre on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. If anyone um, if you have never been, please do pop in um, and say hello. It's a really lovely, warm, welcoming environment. We have live shows on in our theatre throughout the year. Um, we've run workshops um, in the centre as well. And we've also got a really lovely cafe that does the best haggis meats and tatties around so do pop in if you're ever in Edinburgh and and say hello. Um, the Storytelling Centre is also the primary host site for the Scottish International Storytelling Festival. That is 
is Clapton with this question because if you don't know the Scottish International Storytelling Festival, please make a point of checking it out and putting it in your diaries. Um, it is one of the longest running storytelling festivals in the world. I think about 20, 25 years it's been, been running for. Um, we take we have the festival each year at the end of October, the last two weeks in October. Um, and we always have a theme, which is kind of overarching of what the festival is about. So last year's theme is Imagine and was Imagine. And I'm telling you that for like a, a reason of how talk and statues really came about and, and two other reasons that I would like to elaborate as well. Um, our festival last year um, started to, more things were happening in person. We were kind of coming out of the strange little world of what two years had been prior of lockdowns. And from that, we started beginning to think, well, you know, imagine if we could start doing things differently. Our whole world has changed. Imagine what it would be like in the future. Imagine this and imagine that. And it was a really nice concept to start thinking about coming out of this strange little time into a new brave world, basically, and how we would like to, to shake that up. On the back of that, the festival happened after what would have felt like two years of myself, along with probably many of other views, walking the same patch of area in my local community every day, often for only 1.1 hour a day, doing the same kind of loop. And within that loop, I started to become more and more aware of plaques on the wall, of little local museums that I'd never been to, of, of statues in my community. And I started to then almost kind of like uni days become a bit obsessive of wanting to know who who is this old white dude on a horse on a plinth in my community? What does he represent? What is backstory? And I was finding that after these walks, I was going home and doing simple, even just simple kind of Google Wikipedia wormholes, getting caught into finding more and more links, more and more information about this person. Um, but also people who existed that haven't been celebrated in my community. Where are their statues? Why am I not seeing those? That person's more fascinating than this, this guy. What's going on there? Um, and going into more like archive material and things like this. So that simultaneously, as I was doing that, the world broke with news about Black Lives Matter movement, um, which obviously has always existed in the cause, rightly so was brought to our attention through press and media. So those three things combined at this time between my own thirst of wanting to find out about statues and monuments in my area, aligned with Black Lives Matter and with this idea of imagining a new world and a new concept as part of the festival, we started talking about this idea. Well, imagine if you could start to think about who should be on a plinth or imagine if we did start to get uncomfortable and actually talking about these uncomfortable truths attached to statues in our community or imagine if we just started retelling the more joyful celebratory stories of statues that currently exist so as mentioned with the dates i was very aware that this is such a big topic we had a short time frame to do it in so the way that i wanted to tackle this was to have as many easy access points and ways of engaging with this so that at least people couldn't fully get into the full 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 concept of what the project is they were at least aware to start getting this conversation happen or putting it in to their viewpoints and and their, and their thoughts so to do that what we came up with was this idea of first and foremost like what i had been doing after my, my lockdown walks was to go and start researching so statues that currently exist and also people in your community that you'd maybe heard about but didn't know the full narrative of. And that could be your great granny that did something great in the community, or it could be the statue that currently exists that you just didn't know that the, the full story about. So to start using research portals, archives, libraries, if they were available and open at that time, and simply just a strike up conversation with family members and people in the community. From that, then we wanted to offer a free storytelling skills workshop where you could come along with the nugget of information that you had and learn the very basic skills to relay that story to another person if you, if you wish to. Then we also ran a social media discussion day, which was basically covering all angles of what the project was about, largely to get people's feeds full of information about statues in, in Scotland and sometimes beyond. Um, then we also asked people to come along to a story exchange 
So once they felt comfortable enough and had got enough information and research and learned the basic skills to tell a story, they could come along and share that story in a supportive and encouraging environment as well. I was also really aware that for people maybe stepping into this area that they would never used archives or library services or anything like that before. And if I was asking them to, they kind of needed the support behind it in order to get the kind of best out of that. Um, so I set up an afternoon of Explore Your Archive event um, with the National Library of Scotland and the Glasgow's Win Women's Library. Um, another strand of it that was quite keen to do was to actually get people in front of statues or in front of the empty plinths where statues sh statue should be. So we set up walking tours of Edinburgh. I would have loved for this to have been a nationwide kind of um, offering to do walking tours in different cities, but as with most things, um, budget and funding and just resources, um, we had to focus quite close to home for this one. So we, we badged up with a local tourist um, walking company called Mercat Tours, who do tours and walks of Edinburgh. And basically we give a brief of what we would kind of hope to get from this project. And they did fantastic, meticulous research on current statues that exist and, and the empty um, spots on our skylines and did walking tours between September and October, leading up to the end of the festival. Another way to engage with it was a social media art challenge. So this was just a really easy, fun, creative way of getting involved. We asked people to document statues through photography in their local area and share them online with a bit of backstory of research that they've done or to create their own through um, different art means as well. Um, we also created school resources and we also offered fully funded storytelling sessions for any schools that wanted to, to take up the theme of talking statues. So this is just gives a little snapshot of what the kind of different angles of engagement that we wanted to at least start with, get the ball rolling with. I've got a little video that kind of encapsulates all of that. And then I'll go in and start teasing out bits of it, especially the archive side of stuff, which might be of interest. So hopefully the sign works on this fine for you. So that gives like a little view of the different components that I, that I mentioned. Um, and then I, I thought maybe it might be best is I'll go into some of those in a bit more detail. So I mentioned that we held an afternoon of exploring your archives. And this is something that I'm so delighted to see. Um, it's something that I feel is long to be continued between storytelling forum work and other archive bodies. The relationship between the two to tell contemporary stories or stories that are relevant and pertinent today through, through the vehicle of traditional storytelling 
but using archives as a resource, the two are intrinsically linked and they just work so wonderfully um, together. So for the archive side of the talk and statues, I reached out to um, National Library of Scotland and Glasgow Women's Library um, because we had storytellers already doing similar kind of work in different areas with them. So I knew that this would be a really kind of already building on a foundation here of, of, of a good solid relationship to show people in the public how archives can be used to, to find stories, but also used for creative responses as well. So we held an afternoon first and foremost to show how this, the searchable and, and, and the functionality of archives, how they work mostly online because the session was online, but we also give tips and resources of how to use hard copies um, and the importance of actually getting in, into buildings to hold things in your hand and the treasures of what they are as well when, when it is feasible. Um, and then from that, after we, we talked about how to use archives, we had um, Nadine, who is a writer, and we had a storyteller, Jan B. Brown, and each of those picked out documentations or artic artifacts from the archives and showed how they would utilize them in their, pra in their practice. So Nadine picked out, um, it was um, an artifact to do with the suffragette movement, and she then read a poem that she made a creative response to this, this piece that she found in the archives. And the good thing about that was Nadine's one showed actually how she could use something in the archives and embellish it in a certain way that made it really digestible and interesting for contemporary audiences, but also making the claim that she, she's using this for creative purposes. It didn't have maybe as much factual kudos as say what a um, academic kind of leading on it. It was done purely for to make it engaging through creative means. Jan B. Brown, however, the storyteller that took part, showed how she used archives and the methods of archives that were so integral to her creating a contemporary story that needed to have the factual timeline, the societal impacts, um, just to get accuracy in her story to make it believable and understandable for contemporary audiences. Um, and this is the archives, again, this is one example I wanted to show you is that Storytelling is its performance, but if you're going to do historical storytelling, you need to know your stuff. And that's why archives is great, because there will always be for a storyteller who's telling a story about um, Glasgow in the 1930s and an important event that happened around that time, there will be guaranteed that there will be somebody in that audience and this is their niche interest and they are sitting with their anorak pulled up ready to actually say, well actually that day it was, it happened in 1932, not 1934. And this is why archives are such an important thing for storytelling community and they love it. So more continued work for um, storytelling and archives that's came out of this project. What was really great about this was, um, for talking statues, is those in attendance of this session for the archive um, afternoon event were then able to go off beyond this have an afternoon to themselves with all the kind of new knowledge that they've got about how to use archiving and how to use it in a creative way and get the skeleton of a story about a statue or a person in their community that they wanted to add the meat and the flesh to that story. And that's when they could come along to the workshop. So the workshop was fronted by Mara Menzies, who is a professional, wonderful professional storyteller. And um, those in attendance of the workshop came along with this little nugget of a story that they'd found from archive or research or family um, communication. And Mara gave them the basic storytelling skills of how to flesh that into an engaging and accurate narrative to use um, voice and dramatic gesture as well, especially if the story was going to be told online in an online setting. Um, but what this workshop also did was open up great discussion around what they'd found in the archives and what stories that they wanted to share and it led on to more splinter conversations which was a bigger part of this project was even the relevance of Scotland of, of statues are they important in society now is there other ways that people should be celebrated in communities um, it got into a lot of discussion around the lack of representation of people of color of women 
of working class narratives of LGBTQ plus stories, how they were missing from the archives or how they were there, but maybe people don't know how to research them um, as best as what they could be. Um, so it opened up fantastic discussion in this workshop. Um, but the main kind of crux of this was that those in attendance were then able to come along if they wished to and share the stories that they'd found in a fully formed kind of way, which is when they could come along to the story exchange. Um, this was an online virtual gathering in a really supportive and encouraged environment. It was headed by Mara and Ruth, um, both professional storytellers. Both of them had also done their own research as an archive and libraries and came along with a story each on a statue that exists and the backstory of that, um, and also one that didn't exist but should. So we've got a really lovely blend of what the project was about with them kind of stirring the, the exchange with those two angles on it. Um, and then the floor was open. Those that had done the research over the last couple of weeks could then feel comfortable enough to share their stories. And the great thing was that every single person in attendance told their story. And at the beginning of it, I said, if you're not fully there yet and don't feel comfortable to tell a beginning, middle, end kind of story, simply acknowledging the name of, especially if the person hadn't yet been celebrated in bronze or marble, at least saying their name by the end of the session, it was almost like it gives life to a kind of a statue and talked about it in a, in a really um, meaningful way too. I want to just make a point about one of the other projects that we run as part of the festival, because last year it kind of ran hand in hand with talking statues. Um, every year we run a project called the Big Scottish Story Ripple. In short, schools and community groups can apply for a fully funded storytelling session. So we fit the bill, we cover the, the, the cost for the storyteller to go into the school or the community group. Then that group offers an act of kindness back to the community. So it creates this ripple of stories and ripple of kindness, kind of the whole ethos of what the storytelling forum is about, really. Um, and the reason I'm telling this is that it's it's usually non-prescriptive. When I reach out to schools and community groups, it's often their first um, access point into storytelling. They often haven't engaged with storytelling. So they don't need a national development officer to come in and say, I'm here to develop you and here's the theme that you must run with. We want them to engage with it in a way that means something to them. So that's often through using local folklore. Um, ghost stories is obviously a big one because of the time of year science-based projects, environmental projects. But this year, last year, I was really glad to say, we are also running a project at the same time. You may want to pick up with this theme. We have resources. It's about looking at statues in your local community and you can get a storyteller into the school to work with you on a project for that. And I'm so glad that we did because we had a great uptake. Um, these were the resources that were put together. This research and statues document basically was a little five pager booklet with links to archives um, across, across the world, but primarily in Scotland, online portals, um, tips on how to get the best out of archives and libraries as well, um, and links to blog posts about um, groups that we realised hadn't really been represented um, through celebrations and communities. So blog posts to Black Lives Matter um, charities and information on how to do research of people of colour in Scotland and also LGBTQ plus communities and, and working class narratives, et cetera, as well. And then we give a little visual prompt where they could, schools could draw or put a photograph in of somebody that they feel should have been celebrated a bit more in their local community. Um, so an example of this, is Fife College. This was such a joy to find in my inbox because um, they basically got the whole idea of what the project was about and ran with it in a way that um, was engaging for the class but even beyond in the whole school as well and they thought about um, if they could honour and highlight the contribution of Scottish people of colour, who would that be? So they spent an afternoon doing the research, reading up, having the discussions, the discussions about what statues are and how they're important for this very reason, that they tell a story, they tell a narrative, um, they make things relevant for today. And then they did the visual prompt and they also put it out, out with their classroom so actually the whole school could learn a bit about who's on this board and why they should be there. They also used their fully funded storytelling session to um, work with Rowan, who is a, a professional storyteller in Fife, and they actually went off location from the school to the, the old Kirk. 
And Rowan is a fond knowledge of all things to do with folklore and fife, and but primarily witchcraft and um, the, the injustice linked around um, the Witchcraft Act in Scotland, which is also seems to be quite prominent in um, Scottish media and of interest at the minute, which is great. Um, so they spent an afternoon telling stories and talking about people who had been persecuted, um, women and men, through the Witchcraft Act and um, how their lives should be given a bit more um, acknowledgement and with the goal of having a monument dedicated in the area as well. Um, and what was really great about this is I got a follow up email to say that the children in the class were so incentivized by this discussion that they actually ended up writing to their AMSP and it was the first time that they've kind of politically engaged with a theme in the classroom in this kind of way, which was really wonderful and how this all came about from them spending time researching and then hearing the stories live as well was just a wonderful thing. I mentioned the walking tours, um, not much more really to say on that, except for that they happened for about five to six weeks in Edinburgh and again looked at people actually under the statues um, and hearing the stories almost as if the statues have come to life in a sense, literally talking statues, um, to hear the story of the ones exist, but also the empty spots in our skyline. And um, what was great about this was it was people from the local area, obviously, but for tourists as well, it was great to see that Edinburgh were actually starting to engage with this topic of statues and wanting to discover um, the prominence of them in society today and the importance of reclaiming narratives and um, telling them afresh, but also acknowledging the gaps in our history too. So that, they, that was a really wonderful opportunity to have that over that time frame as well. We ran a social media discussion. Um, the great thing about the social media discussion is it's basically a living archive. That hashtag is still going. So if anyone didn't catch anything, um, if you go on to, it was mostly Twitter in fairness, but the, the, all these threads and stories and points and discussions are still, still there to catch up on. Um, and we approached Sarah Sheridan, who is an Edinburgh-based writer, and she's just wonderful. I don't know how she retains all the information she does, but even sitting down to have a cup of coffee with her before the project started and said, do you think of doing this thing? Do you want to be involved? She sat for half an hour and told me oh, such fascinating stories. Um, so I'm so glad that she was, she was able to take part on the online discussion. And she focused on... Um, people of colour, women, working class and LGBT, LGBTQ plus narratives um, of people that should be celebrated in Scotland um, and where the statue should be in that kind of location, which is really good. They're fantastic threads. Please do go and hunt them out and just their work in general if, if this is of interest to you. The flip side of that was Scran, which is um, it's actually a HES resource uh, um, don't know really how to phrase it, but um, they have a collection of uh, visual documentations, basically a visual document archive. They're wonderful um, and so knowledgeable. And I'm so glad that I don't know if Jackie even from Scran is here today, but a big thank you. They basically did a post every day of October around statues that exist in Scotland. So while Sarah covered the ones that should exist, Scran covered the ones that do exist and where they are. And it was just this really nice balance of the two kind of topics. Um, and then on the main day, we, we basically opened the question out and like City of Literature, Scottish Book Trust, National Galleries of Scotland, they all kind of joined in the conversation as well, which was really, really great to see. We also ran the social media art challenge. Again, this was asking people to go out with their cameras and pop the statues that currently exist and give their backstories. But then also we give prompts to do um, through watercolors, um, collage, surprisingly not many people took up on the clay one, but we had some really lovely creative pieces come in of imagining which statues should exist. Um, and then there was a competition with that that they could get a copy of Sarah's wonderful book, Where Are All the Women? which is um, focusing on all the empty plinths of women um, and their narratives across Scotland. Press and marketing. Um, I was a bit reluctant to even mention this one because I suppose it's, it's more interesting really for us on the backside of things um, whenever we're putting projects together. But what I did want to show was that there is clearly still an appetite for this discussion. 
And um, to continue, we were basically in every single traditional press outlet with this project. Um, we were on STV News, BBC News, radio, and um, social media as well, covered it beyond our own, our own discussion day. And the great thing for us was this showed really how storytelling, often because we're a traditional art form, many people think it's not contemporary or it's, it can't be used as a vehicle to discuss contemporary and pertinent issues. Um, but the very fact that there was so much pickup of this shows that actually it's the perfect storytelling is the perfect thing to, to, to talk about statues with because it's just about telling stories that exist, but also reclaiming stories as well and telling them afresh. And it just got really, really, really good pickup for that reason. I think um, that's some numbers. What next? Um, the big question, as you can tell, personally even, I'm very enthusiastic about this topic, um, but from, from splinter on from this thing, we've had many people get in touch to say what kind of things are you planning on doing with the future? Largely, it's a case of though, show me the money. We um, are dependent on funding for quite a lot of our stuff. And often with the cases, if a project's already done or considered done, funders see that as a tick box thing. And um, we find it a bit more difficult to get continued money from it. But we do plan on doing more things around the topic of statues, but also, as I mentioned, this idea of using archives and research and, and how to tell them with contemporary stories. So there is more things to come down the line. And I know that within Hess, there's some fantastic stuff happening with plaques and women writers and things like that down the line. So there's definitely crossover there to happen in the future. But what I did want to talk about um, just before I close off is a project that we're running this year as part of the Storytelling Festival. Um, this is kind of the public participation campaign, what Talk of Statues was last year. Um, this It's called Attic Archives. And at the moment, it's basically a save the date, really, because we're, we're just in the process of getting it all firmed up as to how we're doing it. But for us, it's this main kind of belief that the most kind of vital stories and most engaging and meaningful stories um, to our communities and personal are actually in our own attics and in our own homes. Our whole house is an archive, basically, um, from things like family recipes, to like family traditions and idioms, to your first gig ticket, your first um, dance hall that you went to, cinema, um, childhood games, songs, and Basically, the little things that we have memories in our home and how they are integral to creating a, a, a national narrative, basically. So we'll be running um, com uh, community storytelling events with these different prompts. So looking at things like entertainment and food and um, the, even things of like looking at people's first photographs of when they arrived in Scotland and things like this as well. Um, and then we'll be running a series of events as part of the Storytelling Festival called When I Was We, which we'll be looking at complete nostalgia, stri nostalgia trips of um, childhood games, songs, and um, TV shows, toys, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, again, there's more crossover here with archives to happen, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So I guess it's just a case of keep your eyes on us and for now I'm going to stop saying the word storytelling over and over again and just to say as you can probably guess I enjoy chatting so if anyone would ever like any more information or to find out a bit more about what the storytelling forum is or how we're continuing with talking statues please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you so much for having me here today.